Hello friends and subscribers, this is Jamie the Board Game Man coming back to you for another episode, and it's a card game. This card game I actually recently came across on BoardGameArena.com, BGA, and I started playing this game on there and I actually really fell in love with it. I, it's a lot of fun to play. It just came out in 2019, it plays 2 to 6 players, ages 8 and up. It is called Llama the Card Game. I know it's a funky theme. You got llamas and rainbows. It's very, very interesting. And it kind of plays like Uno, kind of, sort of, but it doesn't. And I do love Uno. I won't I won't uh, bash Uno at all because I do love Uno. But I actually think this is better. Now, in this game, there is no reverses or skips or plus two, plus four. There's none of that in this game. And in this game, you don't want points. You want the least amount of points. Now, the cool little um, rule in this game is if you, on a, in a round, you end up getting rid of all of your cards, then you're able to get rid of one of your chips to lessen your score. Pretty cool little concept. So let's get over over the gamer's table right now where I'm going to show you how to play Llama, the card game. Okay, here we are at the table with Llama. Let's go ahead and open up the box and I'll show you what's inside. There's really not much to it. You have some chips and then you have the deck of cards that are right here. And then you have the instruction booklet, which fold out to actually just one long piece of paper, front and back. There we go. And that's all there is to it, to Llama. Now, let me go ahead and show you the cards. Now, the cards have numbers one through six on them. And they also have llamas, which I'll go over in a second. And then you have these chips. These chips represent points, which is something you do not want in this game. The white chips are worth one point, and the black chips are worth ten points. Let's go ahead and take a few of these out. That way, as we play a couple rounds, I can show you how these chips work. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and deal six cards to each player. So one, two, three, four, five, six... One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do a little quick little three player. Three, four, five, six. Okay, each player has six cards. You're gonna go ahead and put the draw pile here and discard one of the cards. In this case, it is a five. Now, what you're trying to do is each player is gonna look at their cards. And you see I have one, three, three, two, yeah, three threes and two fives. What I want to do is I want to use one of my cards and place it on top of the discard pile. Now, it either must be the same number or the next highest number. Okay, that's how this works. The colors of the numbers do not make any difference. All the threes are green, all the fives are orange, all the ones are purple, and so on. So the colors have nothing to do with it. So that's what's different about Uno than this one, is in Uno, the colors mattered. Uh, in this game, it does not. It only matters what the number is. So if I'm the first player, I'm going to go ahead and I can either place a five or a six. Well, I have a couple fives here. So I'm going to go ahead and play the five, okay? Now, player two is down here. Player two is going to look at their cards. Oh, my goodness. This is a horrible hand. <laughs> so you have four twos and two sixes. But in this case, that's good to have the sixes because that is the next number up. So he's going to go ahead and play a six, okay? Uh, third player is going to go look at their cards. And they also have a six. So that would be the next best card to use. They're going to go ahead and do a six. Now, like I said... There's numbers one through six. So what you can use are the two cards that you can use with this are, is a six or a llama. Okay, the llama is the highest card in the deck. So it goes back to player one. Player one does not have any cards he can play. Now, since it's kind of early on, you might want to draw a card, but there is a way you can back out of the game or back out of the round, I should say. But we're going to go ahead and continue. He's going to go ahead and draw a card. Uh, three, another three. That's all he needs, right? And that's it. So once you draw a card, that's it. You do not play the card immediately after you draw it. That's something that usually a lot of games, you draw a card, you can play it. In this game, you don't. You, you, you don't. If you can't play a card, you draw a card, that's it. That's the end of your turn. Player two is going to look over here. They have another six. So he's going to go ahead and play a six. Okay. Player three over here doesn't have any llamas or another six, so he has to draw a card. Aha, there we go. Okay, so player one goes back over here. Player one decides, yes, I need another card. Now he has a llama as well. 
So now player two is going to look over here. All he has is twos, unfortunately. That's not going to help him out very well. He's going to go ahead and draw a card, and he got a five. That doesn't help. And you got player three. Now we can probably continue, because now we have a llama in the game. So now he plays the llama. Now what you can do with this card is you can either play another llama, or you can play a one. So it recycles back to the first number that is in the deck. So in this case, he wants to play the llama. This is the highest card. This is the highest amount of points. So that's why you want to try to get rid of these. Now, the point-wise, when it comes to the chips, obviously one through six is their face value. If you get stuck with a llama, you get 10 points. So whenever you get a chance to lose that llama, you might want to do that. So he's going to go ahead and play his llama. Okay. Player two is going to look over and they're going to say, yeah, I have to draw a card. They're going to go ahead and draw a card. They draw a three. Okay. Player three is going to look at their cards and say, okay, I've got a one. So he's going to go ahead and play his one. This player is going to look over here, and he has another one. So he's going to go ahead and play the one. So you kind of see the gist of how you do this. Obviously, he has a few twos in his deck, so he's going to go ahead and play a two here. Now, player three is going to look over and say, okay, well, I have a two as well, so I'm going to go ahead and play this. Okay. And then this player has just nothing but threes, so that works out for him. So he's going to place a three. Now, that doesn't bode well with this player because he has a lot of twos in here. But, you know, it is what it is. So what we'll do is he's going to go ahead and play his three. Okay. This player's going to look, and he also has a three. And he's looking pretty good here. He's got these in a row. So this is actually pretty good in some cases. So I got three. You only got two cards left, player three. Then we got this over here. He's also got another three. So that actually works out good for him. And he does not have a card here. Now, he's gonna, you know, so he thinks, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and stay in one more round, see what happens. So he's going to go ahead and draw a card. Ooh, he gets the four. Okay. So here we go. Player three has a four. So he's going to go ahead and play a four. Now he only has one card left. And this player over here has a five. So he's going to go ahead and play his five. Player two goes, okay, well, I got a five here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and play my five. And guess what? Now all of a sudden, player three has a five. He's going to end the round. So that automatically ends the round. And now we're going to see, obviously, he's not going to get any chips because he doesn't have any points left over. Now, for player one, he's got two threes left over. Now, what happens when it comes to adding points? You do not get hit twice on the same number. So instead of getting six points, since they're two threes, player one is only going to get hit with three points. Okay, so any duplicate numbers you have, you only get hit once for that number. So he's going to get three white chips because these are worth one point apiece. He has three chips in his hand. Okay. Player two is going to look at theirs and they're going to have four plus two because all these twos equal into one. So now he's got six points. Okay. That's what he ends up with. So he's going to take six of these white tokens and player two's got six. Okay. All right. So then we're going to go ahead and redo all this. Okay. And everything gets redone and now we're going to have six one two three four five six one two three four five six and one two three four five six okay and then we're going to go ahead and take the top card here which is a four this round okay now since player three won the last round he's going to go ahead and start off the round he's going to go ahead and look at his cards not too bad you, you kind of like them a little spread out in this game so let's go ahead and play the four, since the four is there, okay? This player over here, player one, also has a four, so you can go ahead and play the four as well. And player two is looking, boy, you got fours everywhere. Now, he can play the five if he wants to, but that, I mean, that would leave you with the fours behind. So you, that's why it's usually a, the best thing to do is to play the number that's on the hand here. So we're going to do four. Player three is going to look at their cards, and they also have a four, so he's going to go ahead and play his four. So now player one's going to look, and he they have they don't have any luck here. You got three ones, a three, and a six. That's not going to help. He goes ahead and draws a card. Oh, he gets another one. That doesn't help very much. Player two is going to look. They have a four. Let's go ahead and play that four. Get that out of there. And he has a five. So this player is going to play a five. Goes back to player one. The only card he can play is a six. So he's going to go ahead and play his six. Well, that doesn't help player two very much. So he's going to go ahead and draw a card. He gets the llama. 
which will definitely help if no one else plays off of that. And he doesn't have anything here. He's going to go ahead and stop because he notices that he goes, you know what? I'm just going to, just for sake of purposes here, I want to show you. So in this case, this would be four. And But what he does, you know, if he wants to quit, say you want to quit, you go ahead and just put the cards face down in front of you and say you're out. Okay. So player one's going to look over here and say, you know what? Yeah, you know what? I'm, uh, you know, while I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and draw a card. So he draws a card, he gets the six. This player has the llama, so he's going to go ahead and play the llama and get that out of his hand. That player's out, so we're going to go back over here. Now he's stuck with that six, unfortunately, because now the llama's been played. So he's going to go ahead and play the one. This player goes, well, let me go ahead and play the two. He plays the two. He plays the three. Goes back to this player. He has twos and fives. He's going to go ahead and draw a card, see what happens here. He gets a six. That doesn't help too much unless he has a four over here, which he does not. He says, I'm going to go ahead and draw because he notices this player still has four cards in his hand. So there's still a chance to still keep playing. He has a five. Okay. This player looks over and this player is stuck here. He doesn't have a three or a four. He goes ahead and draws a card and he gets a llama. Goes back over here. They still don't have a card to play. Let's just say he draws. Oh, geez, he gets a six. So you can see how this kind of goes back and forth here. And sometimes that does happen. Sometimes you have a drawing war where you keep drawing back and forth. All right. This player still doesn't have anything. So he's going to draw a card. He draws a five. Now we're going to get somewhere. Now he's going to draw the four. Okay. Now he has that five in here. So he's going to go ahead and play the five. He plays his five. And now you can see it's starting to dwindle now. Now we got another five here. This player's going to go play and try to get one of one of his sixes here. He's going to play his six. You can see how it goes back and forth here. Player three is missing out on all the fun here. He's got a six. He's going to go back. Now he's going to have to play a llama because he's got four llamas here. He definitely wants to get rid of those. He's got a llama. This player has a llama. So this player has another opportunity to get rid of another llama. And now we're back to one. This player goes, okay, well, I'll play my two. He plays a two. This player goes, uh-oh, I'm stuck. And you know what? It's a long way, since it's only two other players, to get to a six. He's going to go ahead and stop. So he's going to get seven points there, and he's going to say, I'm, I'm out. This player goes, okay, I'm going to play my final two. That way I don't get hit with two points. And now he's out. Now, what happens is if you are the last player to be in the game, let's just say this was it here, okay, Actually, let's just say this is how it was. You're the last player in. Once you're the last player in the game, you are not allowed to draw any cards. You're allowed to play any cards that are in your hand. Okay? But you're not allowed to draw any hands if you're the last player standing. So you have to just play what you have. You can't play it. And you just have to fold and you're done. Okay? So that round is mercifully done. <laughs> so this would be seven points for this one. And the one thing I want to show you about this... So you're going to go uh, four, five, six, seven. Now, once you have 10 chips worth in your hand, right Right now we have exactly 10, you are allowed to switch it out for a 10. Okay? And you'll see why. There's a big reason for that in a minute. I'm going to tell you that right now. Player two, they got. You, know, you don't get hit with both of these, thank goodness. That would be 20 points. Because the first player to 40 points... That triggers the end of the game, and whoever has the least amount of points or chips after someone has hit 40 ends up winning the game. So that's how the final goes. So he's only going to hit with the 10. He gets hit with 10. This player, it gets hit with only 4. So that's not bad there. So he's going to get with 4 chips over here. Okay. And that is the end of that round. Okay. Take all the cards. Let's go ahead and do a reshuffle. Now I'm going to go over something, what happens in the game. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We start off with a one. Okay. So this this was the last player to bow out, so he goes first. He's going to look, and he has a one. Now we're going to say this is what happens when you go through all your cards. So say you go through, and you're, you're playing all your cards, and you... Here's my last card. I'm out. 
I've played all my cards. You are allowed to get rid of any one chip of your choice. Which is a big deal, because if you have a 10 chip, guess what? You can turn it back in, and just like that, you got 10 more... You got 10 less points against you, which is awesome. Now, if that was player one that did that, say player one said, okay, that's my that's my final card. He goes from 10 points to zero. So it's, it's, so it's a very big bonus if you were able to get rid of all your cards. Because once you do that, you can get rid of any one chip you want. Now, obviously, if you have like 11, you're not going to get rid of the white chip. You're going to get rid of that one black chip because that's worth 10 points. This is only one. And what's kind of a bummer, if say you had nine, you know, you're one away from getting that 10th chip. I mean, sometimes you actually kind of want, you rather have 10 and nine, because that way if you, if you do get rid of all your cards, you're able to just get rid of that one chip. So instead of getting rid of one, you'd have eight. Okay. And that is pretty much how you play Llama. So you keep playing until someone hits 40 chips. And that, or 40 or more, I should say. At that point, it triggers the end of the game. You count each other's chips, and whoever has the least amount of chips wins the game. And there, my friends, is Llama. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, and if you do have the game, if you played it before, if you like it, dislike it, let me know. And hopefully this is a game you never heard of, and you're interested in getting it now. So, well, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy gaming, everyone.